All systems online. Welcome citizens. In this video we'll be taking a look at the Anvil Valkyrie. We'll be going over the stats of the ship, looking at its standard loadout and giving our thoughts on the ship's uses and possible upgrades. As with all things Star Citizen, keep in mind that specific details of the ship could and probably will change over time as the game's development progresses. The Valkyrie is a heavy dropship from Anvil Aerospace capable of transporting 20 fully armed troops and a single vehicle into combat zones. The Valkyrie also has enough turrets and side guns to clear a safe landing zone and to cover the troops when they are on the ground. Initially developed for use within the Squadron 42 single player game, the Valkyrie was released flight ready during CitizenCon 2018. It was available with a special edition Liberator skin and now costs $375 when available on the store page. The ship is deceptively large in size and has a robust, chunky appearance that gives the impression that the Valkyrie is heavily armoured. This can be slightly misleading because the Vanguard Hoplite is around the same size on paper due to its wingspan but has more hull durability. So once the armour mechanics are introduced into the game, this comparison might become more meaningful. Or not. The Valkyrie fits the anvil design expertly well. It feels right at home flying alongside the Terrapin and Hornet and its silhouette is distinctly that of a military ship. The Valkyrie's cockpit feels very enclosed and has great visibility of all the MFD screens. Unfortunately, visibility below the ship is restricted and some pilots might find it difficult to land in first person view. The rest of the interior is spacious and features a lot of the same design language that is seen within the Terrapin and more recently the Carrack. Entering the ship via the rear vehicle bay gives access to the troop jump seats through a pair of heavy doors. These jump seat areas also serve as an airlock between the entrance ramp and the turret on the ship's belly. The vehicle and cargo bay also gives access to weapon racks and the side sliding doors which, when opened, can deploy retractable size 1 turrets to be cover to the ground troops exiting the ship. A single central ladder leads up to the five bunk beds for the flight crew which are exposed to the elements when any of the ship's doors are opened. This might be an odd oversight by the designers which will get fixed in the future, or it might be an intended flaw to limit the ship being used as an explorer. This upper deck also has a separate restroom, access to the roof turret and connects to the cockpit and wing mounted remote turret control consoles. Apart from the exposed sleeping quarters, the overall design of the interior is well planned and provides a good flow through the ship. The ship's four VTOL thrusters can push out an optimal speed of 165 meters per second and a maximum speed of 1100 meters per second giving the Valkyrie a decent pace to get in and out of combat zones fast. Its standard size 2 Odyssey Quantum Drive is also very effective at getting the ship to where it needs to be quickly and efficiently and with 2500 units of fuel in the quantum tanks it can do several trips around Stanton before needing to refuel. The Valkyrie comes equipped with two size 2 full stop shield generators which output a formidable 43,752 hit point shield, much like the Vanguard and Constellation ship lines. The ship's hull also currently has a durability much like the Vanguard heavy fighters once the shields fail. The Valkyrie's large vehicle bay can carry an Ursa rover or several smaller ground vehicles along with its complement of troops. It also has a small 30 SCU cargo capacity for supplies or high value items. The Valkyrie's other major components consist of two size 2 arctic coolers and two size 2 maelstrom power plants. The Valkyrie packs a sizeable amount of firepower into its large frame, featuring a pilot controlled turret, two wing mounted remote turrets, two manned turrets and even two retractable turrets on the side doors. The pilot control turret is fitted with two size 2 Scorpion GT215 ballistic gatlings, while the top, bottom and wing turrets are each equipped with size 3 Mantis GT220 ballistic gatlings. 
Lastly, the retractable door turrets are fitted with smaller size 1 yellow jacket GT210 Gatlins. Combined, this setup can output a blistering amount of damage and the Gatlin's shorter range suit the ship's role perfectly. Overall, there isn't really much to upgrade on the Valkyrie. Swapping out the standard Odyssey Quantum Drive for the slightly better size 2 Himera unit will improve fuel efficiency or go with a Crossfield Quantum Drive for twice the speed at double the fuel cost. The base Valkyrie setup is so good that it doesn't need any other changes. While there are several other ships that can be used to transport troops to a combat zone, those other ships aren't true dropships. With a price tag of $375, the Valkyrie is on the expensive side of ship purchases and is best used by large organisations rather than a squad of solo players. As with most large ships, it can be used solo, but doing so leaves it vulnerable to faster attackers. It can also be used to carry some cargo for trading, but again, there are better ships available for doing that. The Valkyrie is only as strong as the team that are operating it, and when used properly, it is the best at what it does. Okay, so we hope this review has been helpful or informative. If you like the vid, click that like button and subscribe for more Star Citizen videos. Also, feel free to tell us your thoughts on this ship in the comment section below. Bye for now.